Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 24th episode of IC ICPA Clinical Series. The theme of ICPA Clinical Series is each episode one clinical challenge. And today we have Dr. S. Jayachandran with us. And Dr. S. Jayachandran is an MDS in oral medicine and he is also a PhD holder. Dr. Jayachandran is a professor and head of Department of Oral Medicine. Tamil Nadu Government Dental College and Hospital, Chennai. He is the former president of Indian Academy of Oral Medicine and Radiology. And he is a teaching faculty and with academic experience of more than 25 years. He is a fellow of National Academy of Medical Sciences. And he has more than 120 publications and contributed to several chapters in books. And uh, he is interested in innovative, recent diagnostic and treatment modalities. With his vast and rich experience in oral medicine, we thought it would be a great idea to invite him to speak on one of the very complex, complex topics in general practice where practitioners find it difficult to diagnose the oral mucosal lesions. What should be the clinical approach? So we have invited Dr. Jayachandran to, to throw more light on this and to do complete justice to the topic. Dr. Jayachandran, welcome. The show is Thank yours. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv, for your nice introduction. Shall I start now? Hello? Your slide is visible. You can start. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, all the participants, all the uh, people are joining in this uh, clinical series. It is a good, wonderful opportunity to interact with you and the, uh, on the topic on oral mucosal lesion and the simple uh, practitioner's approach. The varieties of lesion has been identified in the oral cavity. It may be arising from the either from the from the oral cavity or from the systemic influence of the some of the diseases. So these are the some of the areas I'm going to cover for the how this practitioners has uh, used the clinician knowledge to diagnose the oral mucosal lesion and how to treat the some of the common conditions will be discussed in this uh, series. So. I am a Dr. Jayachandran working in Government Dental College as a professor in head. And uh, the next is that uh, I am going to give this a brief introduction about the oral mucosal lesions. These are the very commonly encountered in the clinical dental practice, in the day-to-day -day your clinical practice. Uh, so you need a more diagnostic skill and knowledge of this uh, uh, lesion origin, how it is arising and what is the etiology for these conditions and what is the common location of the lesion based on the, all the clinical features, you can make the diagnosis and you can also uh, uh, advise the patient for the management and the treatment. Sometimes the patient also referred by the some of the medical practitioners for their treatment. So as a dental professional, you should know how to approach these patients and how to uh, improve the conditions and improve the quality of the life of the patients. So apart from this, you should know the thorough systematic approach to be sought for the every oral lesions. So I told you different kinds of oral lesions, almost some of the lesions from the systemic disease, some from, from the in per se from the oral mucosa itself, or it is a due to the improper oral hygiene, or sometimes it may be due to the habit related. All this all very important for the your approach. So first, you should know the history of the lesions. How long the lesion is presented? What is the symptoms? Based on this, we can say it's acute or chronic. Sometimes the lesion may be two or three days. Sometimes it may be a very longer duration. So based on this, also this this finding is also very important history for the making the lesion for the whether it is acute condition or chronic condition and past medical history is also very very essential and whether they had a similar lesions so that indicates the primary or secondary or recurrent lesions so the proper history is a very very important in this and also the number of lesions sometimes it will be single ulcer or single lesions sometimes the multiple lesions also will occurring or recurrent oral ulcer is also very common so all this is essential part when you are approaching these patients and uh, next is going to the medical histories. I told you it is sometimes it is from the systemic origin, whether what are the drugs they are taking it, uh, whether it is a systemic origin or systemic contribute to the cause of the lesions or sometimes the, what are the drugs they are taking it, how long they are taking it and uh, what are the frequencies and whether they are under uh, uh, treatment for any other diabetes or hypertension or 
next point is a habit whether they having any kind of habit uh, deleterious habit like tobacco usage or uh, porn or beetle quit chewing or uh, all this habit is also very essential sometimes these habit itself can cause the uh, oral mucosal disorders or lesions and hence the appropriate follow up to determine if the lesion need further investigations so you cannot make up with them based upon the clinical finding you need further investigation some of the lesions i will discuss about the what are the lesions to be discussed in this uh, system and the next is a uh, after taking the history you know should uh, do the thorough clinical uh, examination of the oral mucosa patient come for some other dental problem you should thoroughly uh, do the uh, oral and mucosal examination for any uh, asymptomatic lesions is present and also you should not differentiate from the normal mucosa from the oral lesion even some of the normal variant also mimic uh, pathological condition that should not be mistakenly identified or diagnosed as a pathology so you should know that what are the normal uh, uh, variants of the mucosa and next any patient come with uh, lesions you should check for the location and where it is exactly is the mobile mucosa or, or keratinized or non keratinized which part of the oral cavity or oral mucosa the lesion is present what is the size of the lesions whether it's increasing or decreasing shape irregular or round or ovoid shape or is there any erythematous hollow is present what is the growth pattern also you should assess and the border of the lesion these are the thorough clinical examination your eye should check and see the mucosal um, alteration in the uh, lesions and the mobility and the consistency of the lesion on palpation whether it's a tenderness present or non tender these are the uh, simple uh, findings can uh, give the clue for you are making the diagnosis and sometimes the lesion may be possibility of two or more different lesion or one lesion with a different presentation also will be present so thorough knowledge is essential here also and finally you should examine the lymph node for it may be associated with a reactive lymph node or it may be metastatic lymph node or it may be lymphadenitis all this related to this oral lesions so hence the thorough clinical history under the clinical examination is paramount important for the approaching the patients to differentiate the oral mucosa lesion from other conditions and in this um, series i am going to discuss about this common lesions i uh, let you go, go, go to the this so sometimes the patients uh, with uh, they'll come with severe burning sensation the patient approach should be sir i had a severe burning sensation in the mouth on examination if you see this is a typical appearance of the uh, white stray will be there and there is a radiating white lines it is typically present on the both bilaterally it will present your thorough examination is needed here and this is a non scrapeable lesion as well as the patient will have mild to moderate severe sometimes there will be severe uh, burning sensation will be there and there will be a, a recurrent uh, remission and exacerbation that is also a typical history that usually the patient gives uh, in this kind of lesions and next is if you see this this kind of the lesion also can uh, commonly seen in the patient mouth when you are examining the routinely and uh, this is a type of uh, lesion sometime this erosive area will cause sometime there will be a severe um, burning sensation that means whenever they take spicy food or hot drinks uh, that will create the higher level of burning sensation and sometimes some of the lesion will be totally asymptomatic they come for routine dental examination you can see there uh, there will be a, some changes in the mucosa so as a clinician you should know any alteration in the mucosa you should have a suspicious whether it could be a, uh, a lesions or it be a normal variant or it, it is a due to the habits so this kind of changes you can observe this is the case you can see it is a case of oral lichen planus oral lichen planus is a chronic inflammatory mucocutaneous disease so it affects the both mucosa as well as in the skin so that's why it's a sometime there and it is a mainly arising from the autoimmune origin associated with cell mediated immunological dysfunctions so it's immune mediated disease can causing the dermatological changes as well as in the oral mucosa as a dental profession as a first person to examine the oral cavity and identify these lesions and then followed by once the patient has developed the oral lesion the later on they can progress to the dermatological lesions sometimes the patient also is referred by the de uh, dermatologist uh, or medical professionals to the dental surgeons for the treatment or sometimes the interdisciplinary approach is also needed for uh, this kind of patients so this is a typical i showed you the bilateral lesions will be present both side both common side is a buccal mucosa 
and uh, there will be a erosive areas will be there or at the periphery you can find the white stray will be there it slowly extended to the other part of the mucus also and the mild to moderate sometimes there will be severe dysphagia also will be there if they extending into the posterior uh, region and also the, the dryness of the mouth also sometimes the patient may complain and uh, then these are the different uh, types the most common type of the uh, oral lichen planus is reticular type of lichen planus that was uh, uh, um, given by the uh, Erasmus Wilson and it looks like a, a lichen which is seen on the rock of the sea rocks so that's why they coined the name of oral lichen planus and then there is a, another type is called papular type and plock type and bullous and erythematous type these are the different variants the same patient would have um, having the two types of two types of the oral lichen planus or there will be one area will be erosive another area will be a um, reticular type there is a papular type or multiple types also will be present on the patient on the tongue is the most commonly affected by the oral lichen planus the papular type of lichen planus and here it as per the who clinical pathological criteria the um, diagnostic criteria for the oral lichen planus is a, is a bilateral bilateral papular or reticular lesion with or without atrophic or erosive lesions will be there with or without erosive sometimes i told you only the reticulation will be there there won't be any symptoms they will they will approach for the some other dental treatment these kind of patients only the asymptomatic um, uh, reticular lichen planus the approach should be no treatments required only the counseling and the reassurance should be given and the patient should be periodically followed second the criteria for the who is a band of it is a histopathological finding. It's a band of infiltrate lymphocyte and the signs of degenerative liquefaction cells of the basal cell layers also will be present. Mostly the lichen planus can be diagnosed based upon the clinical presentation, clinical appearance and also symptoms. Here and also the common uh, features I told you the skin lesion also will be there and a burning sensation, purple and pruritic and polygonal papules also will be present on the skin and the oral mucosa and then these are the the main goal i told you that the treatment this is a autoimmune origin there will be a mild to moderate burning sensation severe remission and exacerbation will be there and also the patient level of stress it may alter it may recur it may relapse also so your motive of uh, goal of your treatment our motive should be there reduce the painful symptoms of the lesion and prevent the recurrence so i told this is also recurrence rate is very high and also relapse will be there and also the uh, halt the risk of malignant transformation some of the particularly the erosive lichen planus are very tendons high tendency to uh, become a malignancy so this lesion, this kind of lesion need uh, follow up and also the biopsy to prove that whether any um, dysplastic changes or malignant changes is present and finally, they improve the oral lichen. This should be the goal of the treatment for the lichen. But this long-term treatment is needed for this patient. And you should follow up the patient. Periodic follow-up is necessary. And coming to this line of management, first is, uh, I told you, this is autoimmune origin. This is stress, a psychosomatic factor is also primary um, factor for uh, aggravating or relapsing these lesions. So the counseling and the reassurance the patient will have a some time they'll go to the medical practitioner they'll go to the dental practitioner and pre periodically they uh, visit the medical professionals for the uh, um, treatment or the symptoms uh, um, uh, reduced so these kind of patients will definitely they develop this cancerophobic also so these kind of um, phobia is also aggravate the lesion hence the counseling and the reassurance is a very very important point you should interact with the patient and explain to the nature of the disease whether this is not a cancerous condition it's a common dermatological condition will occur on the oral cavity it can be treated you give the summary assurance and then removal of the traumatic causes any uh, short tooth is there or the patient is having any uh, habit deleterious habit should be counseled and it should be stopped and the amalgam restoration replacement now the recently there's any kind of metallic restoration or dissimilar metallic uh, fillings or uh, restoration or any uh, um, prosthetic appliances also can cause this kind of uh, um, galvanic reactions and uh, leads to the mucosal reactions hence any recently filled amalgam restoration should be replaced 
and then the dietary modification they should go for the very less spicy food and all the nutritious food and rich in antioxidants all the nutritional diet and modification also should be encouraged to this patient and finally they improve the oral hygiene and also the oral prophylaxis and the chlorhexidine gluconate mouth rinses also will be helpful for this kind of patients here i am showing this uh, the removal of traumatic cause all the um, trauma causing that shark tooth should be blunt and the replacement of the malcolm restoration is also another important step should be observed should be followed in this patients so all the malcolm restoration should be taken and the tooth color filling or um, uh, resin based uh, restoration is a uh, choice for this uh, kind of patients and the general measures the treatment coming to the uh, treatment you have to general measures i eliminate all the exacerbating factors diet avoid smoking healthy food and reduce the stress and next line of uh, treatment is if it is very severe uh, burning sensation just first line of your uh, treatment should be the reduce the pain and burning sensation by giving the topical benzocaine 20% or mucopain ointment is there um, um, it is a product uh, by the icpa and it can be applied it's a long acting um, uh, anesthetic paste it can be applied over the lesion and it form a film and it uh, definitely to relieve the burning sensation um, transiently and then you can go for the uh, medium uh, low potency steroid that uh, variety of the steroid uh, paste or uh, oromucosal paste is uh, available as a 1.1% transenolone acetonide uh, it is also available in the some companies are preparing with a um, um, orabis preparation that will retain the uh, drugs in the long, longer time in the lesion and prevent the salivary dissolution also so hence you can go for the trimsenone acetonide with the orabis preparations uh, which enhance the um, faster healing and also the better retention of the drug and then after the um, uh, sometimes this is not responding then you can go for the medium uh, or high potency steroids steroids can be given point to flucinoside or uh, um, cream is also available that can be used and then even after the medium potency or low potency steroid is not responding then you can switch over to high potency steroid like 0.05 clopidogrel propionate and so anything any steroids is a, a double side um, weapon right you have to use very cautiously and you have to check the patient general status and given um, um, minor, minor uh, topical applications also can cause immunosuppression and uh, which may alter the oral ecology so you must be very carefully uh, watch the patient for uh, during this uh, treatment period and then the if it is not responding sometimes the patient is uh, develop the skin lesion you can go with the systemic steroid can starting dose with a 10 to 20 mg per day and moderate to severe cases till the therapeutic response followed by taper the dose usually you should not abruptly the steroid drug should not be stopped when you are starting it you should uh, taper it and then slowly at the end of the week you can make it 10 mg or 0 mg and then you stop it and then other alternative uh, treatment measures is also available like these are the steroid sparing drugs azathioprine is also very well used and tacrolimus this is a very uh, important drugs nowadays the 0.1% tacrolimus uh, oromucosal paste is also available some of the uh, companies are preparing it can be used to tacros or dolumis these are the preparations for the tacrolimus this is also immunosuppressive analgesic anti-inflammatory it enhances the healing better healing of the uh, lesions and then other uh, treatment modalities like photodynamic therapies is also very widely used and also low level intensity laser we have also tried some of the cases it are responding it um, but to have the long term uh, treatment follow up is necessary for this uh, kind of treatment when the patient is going and other other, other uh, drugs uh, along with the steroids you have to give the immunomodulators immunomodulators tam can also uh, very useful levamisole and chloroquine also can be tried levamisole is a 150 mg tablet can be given along with this all immuno enhanced drugs so along with the steroid if you give this uh, it will be very effective for the treatment and coming to this uh, cases and uh, this is a patient uh, reported to uh, our setup the patient had a typical uh, there is a um, very erosive lesion and also you can notice that in the periphery there's a white striase present in the buccal mucosa 
patient had a more severe symptomatic uh, burning sensation is also present is not able to to food also and also there is a um, pain occasional pain is also present so this patient is uh, treated with the topical you can, we have started we have counseled all the patient and uh, then the uh, systematic evaluation has been done and then followed by this uh, patient is advised for the thorough oral hygiene measures and also dietary modification all the uh, protocol which I, what i have explained given, is given to this patient and then the topical uh, low potency steroid is a trimsinolone acetonide point one percent three times daily applications and this is patient is followed regularly and after the treatment after one week this is definitely the patient you can appreciate that the lesion is completely uh, disappear but even though this patient is a long-term follow-up this is also must and the next another type is a papular type i told you the five types of uh, lesions that most common is reticular another is a papular or the plot type here the mixed type here this patient has also had a severe uh, burning sensations very extensive lesions present on the buccal mucosa labial mucosa and gingiva and uh, um, uh, commissure of the mouth all the parts of the mucosa there is a very extensive papular lesion is present and then this patient is treated with the help of um, topical steroid and the systemic steroid topical and systemic steroid has been advocated after the giving the, all the counseling and uh, the, all the routine protocol has to be uh, given and then you have to here the clinical decision is how to treat this patient whether the combination therapy systemic steroid along with antioxidants and uh, one immunomodulator is also prescribed and then this uh, patient is slowly uh, responding to the therapy and uh, then the totally the, the lesion is a disappear now is the patient is asymptomatic uh, for the burning sensation but however this patient is also should be counseled for, for the long-term uh, follow-up is necessary sometimes there is there is a relapses for this patient amount of their their level of stress is altered or any depression definitely this is a psychosomatic triggers can cause the um, aggravation of the lesions so always this uh, kind of patient should be followed periodically and you can explain to the patient also and then the gingival lichen planus gingival lichen planus is more um, uh, very 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 refractory to uh, treatment and also more symptomatic because it confined only to the gingiva and a severe burning sensation will be there so these kind of a patients will be treated uh, by using the gingival splint lichen planus so you have to make the soft resilient splint uh, the over which there's a steroid or a, um, drugs can be located and they can uh, place it on the patient mouth and for the overnight is also the better and then the slowly the lesion will be disappearing and the burning sensation also reduced this is a kind of the local drug delivery system and the better retention of the drugs for uh, the, in the gingival region so here you can appreciate this uh, treated with the uh, that uh, sprint method and here the extensive uh, lesion on the uh, gingiva confined to the gingiva severe uh, burning sensation and bleeding is also there and then this patient is uh, treated with the help of the um, uh, local drug delivery system like uh, uh, our uh, sprint therapy and then sometimes there's a patient have a severe erosive lichen planus which is not responding to the uh, topical uh, uh, treatment topical steroid you can go for the intralesional injection intralesional means that you have to inject the steroid into the lesion site itself but now there's a the same trimsinolone acetonides available in the injectable form also uh, 40 milligram or 80 milligram uh, in a 2 ml uh, vials and you can use a syringe that's an insulin syringe is a 10 ml uh, 1 ml syringe or uh, 1 ml syringe you can take the medication and slowly uh, multiple site you have to inject the uh, steroids so the, then they need the multiple uh, weekly two size uh, injection they need and then bilaterally you have to inject and wherever the more severe uh, um, lesion is there or severe erosion is there there the site should be chosen for uh, injection and before that is a topical application of uh, mucopain or is a benzocaine ointment 20 percent is a uh, essential to really really relieve the or reduce the pain at the site of injection then this is a intralesional so these are three kind of this is the before treatment and after treatment you can notice there is a complete remission of the lesions so these are the lichen planus approach i told you 
all the counseling reassurances a very very important point and then replacement of the amalgam oral hygiene improvement habit counseling should be given and then you have to make along with this other supportive care under the antioxidants and immunomodulator you have to decide make a clinical decision here whether this patient can be treated with the low potency uh, steroid topical or systemic steroid or intralesional steroid this is a decision you have to take so suppose the lesion is relapsing you can also the, the general practice not try right, and you can refer the patient to the other practitioners or other uh, specialist for the further management of the patients and next is a photodynamic therapy is also we have tried only for minimal uh, cases you have tried with uh, using the uh, methylene blue mediated photodynamic therapy it is also promising there is a good results for this but however you need more number of cases to be treated by using the photodynamic therapy with the other photosensitizer like methylene blue or lugol iodine all the um, um, iodine based uh, methylene blues also should be tried and next is a low level laser therapy is also we have, we have tried and this all the non um, invasive method of treating because sometimes the patient is contraindicated for steroid you cannot advocate steroid for all the patients suppose patient is a diabetic or uncontrolled diabetic and severe infection is there and he is under a um, medically complex person you cannot give the steroid for the even topical also so, sometimes there is a um, um, steroid is a refractive type of uh, uh, lesion is also there and uh, refractive type of oral uh, lichen planus you need to go for other alternative methods like low layer level laser therapy or photodynamic therapy and here also the long term follow up you can notice there is a pre treatment and first week there is a partial remission and you have to scale the lesions of grading of the burning sensation is also important and then the notice the intensity of the erythema should be reduced and the white stray also will be reduced that is the uh, assessment you can notice and uh, these are the other method of treating the lesions and sometimes there will be a patient also is reported uh, to our uh, setup with uh, there is a similar there is a buccal mucosa there is a one side only uh, similar type of oral uh, lichenoid reactions it almost a mimic clinically it is mimic like a clinically appearance of the oral lichen planus it's called oral lichenoid reaction it closely resembles a olp and occurs very 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 adjacent to the immediately adjacent to the metallic restoration or recently filled amalgam restorations and which is mainly the due to the delayed hypersensitive reaction to the antigen so that that may be the uh, acute reaction to the mucosa histopathological also to mimic lp uh, and here i am showing the one case uh, the um, there is a buccal mucosa there is a lichenoid reaction after the in the in the vicinity of the in the close vicinity of the amalgam restoration which is touching the buccal mucosa and after the patient is counseled and uh, after this the filling has been replaced with the use of, with the uh, tooth colored uh, composite restoration and the lesion is regress patient is asymptomatic asymptomatic coming to this so these are the about the oral lichen planus this is the common condition we have seen and next is a patient uh, coming to the clinic or it will be referred to uh, referred by the other medical fraternity or medical professions for the opinion or the treatment of the lesions so this is a condition sometime patient reported with multiple oral ulcers on the oral cavity uh, it is very very small ulcers or it may be a larger ulcers with a short durations the healing or sometimes longer duration will be take healing and these are the some of the characteristic features it confined it will present only on the buccal mucosa or soft palate or a tongue and it is a case of recurrent apthostomatitis it is easily diagnosable condition clinically and uh, it is a self limiting lesions and painful recurring oral ulcers in the mobile mucosa it is a mobile mucosa mainly it is present on the buccal mucosa labial mucosa tongue and soft palate and um, hard palate and gingiva it won't touch and it is mainly due to the immunological other factor is also there other precipitating factors like nutritional origin or it may be a, a stress induced or pre menstrual or post menstrual all the other factors precip precipitating factors will be there and this is this is a case of oral um, recurrent oral uh, apthostomatitis 
the treatment and after a thorough, thorough evaluating the patient i told you all the patients should be um, um, counseled and thoroughly examined and the general status should be assessed uh, and the blood cell level of the hemoglobin level and nutritional status should be assessed and if any underlying factor is there that should be also be uh, one of the precipitating factors that should be corrected and then the topical anesthetics here the main pain will be the severe pain mild to moderate pain will be there so you have to use the anesthetic benzokine um, 20 percent uh, mucopene ointment also very useful then the topical steroid uh, mainly the transinolonosterinite some cases you can go for flobitazole and then uh, the mouth hygiene should be improved with the use of two percent fluorexidin gluconate uh exigel hexidin is also there and then some um, uh, try you can use it for tetracycline doxycycline rinses you can uh, that is also to promote the healing and uh, to control the secondary bacterial infections uh, and nowadays the um, muco adhesive patches is also tried for the better addition of the drugs to the uh, recent site some cases you can go for the systemic steroid and uh, it's all refractive cases you have to choose the only one one or two treatment protocols only and other drugs also tried with the various uh, success rate colchicine and the tap so these all analgesic anti-inflammatory drugs uh, the patient is contraindicated steroid you can try these drugs and uh, probiotics and nowadays the uh, we feel like the pre and probiotics is very very essential drugs which maintain the oral ecology oral microbial flora it's along with other uh, drugs the bifilac is also essential uh, part of the uh, drugs to maintain the oral ecology and which is also reduce the pain as well as improve the uh, healing faster and maintain the um, oral microbial flora ecology and um, it prevents the secondary bacterial infections healing will be faster next is hurricane elixir is also tried this is a mixture of um, diphenhydramine and uh, uh, lignopine and the magnesium trisilicate these are the antacid this is a combination this is a mixture is also very useful it is temporarily to reduce the pain as well as uh, anesthetic effect will be there it uh, um, an uh, antacid magnesium trisilicate will form the coating and it acts as a uh, sucrophate like the healing will be faster so this is also be tried this is a combination of the drugs can be used and other uh, one of the main drug is uh, nowadays is amloxanox is a five percent oral paste um, it is uh, brand name is available in the lexanox this is a cream is available again it is a non-steroidal analgesic anti-inflammatory which is very very useful for the oral paste for treating the um, arthrostomatitis recurrent arthrostomatitis some cases here i am showing this uh, this uh, cases is very um, major arthrostomatitis and based upon the size and the duration of the healing you can classify into minor major and herpetic form uh, major um, ulcer is very refractive uh, to treatment and also the very painful conditions and it affect the any part of the oral mucosa uh, on the lining mucosa uh, if it is it can be treated along with the mouth rinses and uh, um, bifilac and then this case is also tried with the intralesional injection and the um, um, intralesional injections also in the large ulcers you tried uh, intralesional and some cases we can go for the systemic steroid also and um, chlorexidine gluconate mouth rinses and underlying um, uh, factors should be and conditions or uh, suppose the patient is anemic that should be corrected so this is the condition you are treated and then this is also a recurrence rate is very high and uh, need the long-term follow-up and periodic follow-up to this patient patient should also be counseled and next is a uh, other major major of the ulcer is a, a very large ulcer then after some time it is healed by giving this uh, steroid and topical amloxanox paste and next i'm going to this is another yet another case i'm showing this and next is a uh, sometimes the large ulcers with the uh, same thing will be there same uh, um, um, ulcers will be there very painful condition you it is very refracted to the other immunosuppressive drugs you can look and check for the other uh, immunosuppressive condition like uh, hiv induced oral ulcers you have to think you are a differential diagnosis sometimes it is not responding any condition is atypical form or it's not responding to routine conventional treatment you have to look for the other uh, condition like uh, their hiv induced so they need a multiple condition multiple uh, diagnosis as well as for the treatment
so here next i am coming to this very important um, case this this is also encounter in our daily routine practice um, and the patient will be prescribed by any drugs or this thing they will report the severe oral ulcers severe oral ulcers very short duration it is a short duration this is this patient is reported with a very extensive oral ulcers and um, on the uh, their eye signs is also very redness and of severe burning sensation of the eye and oral mucosa is there and here you can see the the entire oral mucosa is the more red and bright red in color and bleeding in some part there is a crustacean of the blood is also there and look at this buccal mucosa is also very extensively ulceration what is the confined to the only the mucosa is not able to swallow food and uh, severe uh, dysphagia is also there because of uh, other uh, part of the mucosa is also affected and then see the look at the, the tongue and the palate is also severely inflamed and the erosion areas is present so this is a case of um, erythema multiform minor so this is a drug induced erythema multiform so very careful i told you when any patient comes the, the medical history is very important whether are you dry, uh, hypersensitive or allergic to any drug should be the question and this patient this patient is a prescribed by one of the um, medical professional by the um, Brufen and other analgesic anti-inflammatory that is the cause for this uh, uh, kind of ulcers and then after approaching this as the patient is gently you have to debride the lesions because uh, uh, debride the lesion and remove all the necrotic and uh, pseudom pseudomonas uh, formation and it's a drooling of the saliva is also reduced the gently you have to use the hydrogen peroxide and dilute with the saline gentle for form of hydrogen peroxide with the saline and you have to remove the all the debris and it will promote the healing also then you have to the lesion is reduced in severity and then you have to start the drugs these are the drugs we have prescribed for this patient so since it is an allergic reaction you have to give the steroids for this patient and the day one the, the, it's a five milligram prednisone available three uh, day three and four you can do the six tablets like this 30 milligram and the second is a 30 milligram and the 25 20 slowly you have to taper it and stop it along with the steroid and you have to the levomisole is an immunomodulated drug 150 milligram one body for three days and the cephalaxin 250 milligram for to control the secondary bacterial infection and chlorpheniramine it again is anti-allergic anti-histamine drugs and four milligram on bid ranitidine and benzeramine hydrochloride mouth rinse the pool water is there so you have to prescribe all these drugs to reduce the symptoms and burning sensation and to reduce the severity of the lesion also so you can notice the uh, response of the our systemic uh, as well as in the local treatment the first day the eye symptoms second first week and second week all the symptoms slowly regresses so it need certain amount of a follow and this is like this in the lip ulceration is also day one and the first week and second week is totally uh, disappears in the second week and the like this in the buccal mucus also completely the um, uh, lesion is uh, disappears and the redness is also there now the patient is asymptomatic for the period and then this is the palate like this is the palate is also completely healed and you can now see this uh, condition before treatment and uh, after treatment complete uh, remission of the lesions so this kind of a patient is a need uh, allergic antihistamine and proper history is also needed when the patients refer to our setup you should know how to treat these patients like this and coming to the next uh, case sometimes the patient with uh, uh, white lesions on the buccal mucosa or in the palate uh, sometime on the tongue also it is not easily scrapable white patches the patient may have a burning sensation or sometimes they will not have any burning sensation or them sometimes the altered taste sensation that may be the cause um will be there then you you, you come across this kind of a patients uh, you have to check for the scrapability of the lesion first and then uh, any risk factors or any habit is there um patient is using any uh, steroid inhaler or is, is they taking any uh, immunosuppressive drugs that may be the cause or are you diabetic or patient all this is history is essential and also you have to think for think in your mind whether it is a patient could be the hiv positive also sometimes the hiv is also one of the cause for the causing the oropharyngeal candidiasis this is a case of oral candidiasis uh, this uh, mainly the caused by the yeast like fungus organism candida albicans 
types of uh, candidias is also there. Pseudomembranous is a, what I've showed in this picture is pseudomembranous and erythematous and angular pilitis and uh, hyperplastic type of candidias is also there. So the diagnostic criteria is a white, yellow, loosely adherent, easily wipeable. If you definitely we have to make the um, isolation of the or isolation or you can demonstrate the fungal mycelium by using the KOH. That is a mother uh, lab side uh, procedure. You have to do it for the diagnosis. And then this is the I told you this is a case of uh, uh, acute pseudomonas type of cadaver easily wipeable and asymptomatic. Sometimes there will be a burning sensation or um, altered taste sensation will be there. And then yet another case you can notice there is a white curd like appearance which is present on the buccal mucosa on the tongue under the floor of the mouth. This is an acute pseudomembranous. So gently you have to take the wooden spatula and uh, scrape the lesion and then, then you can prepare the smear for isolation as well as for the demonstration of the fungal mycelium uh, which is uh, one of the diagnostic aid for whether the lesion is a uh, candidiasis. And you have to assess for the other system because the patient is a diabetic or non-diabetic or hypertension or sometimes they will use a steroid inhaler that may be the cause for the uh, oral candidiasis. So the history, medical history is always very important. And yet another case of uh, candidiasis is that erythematous can see with this condition will definitely will have a severe burning sensation that is also caused by the fungal infection and because of constant touch on the lesion on the palate it can cause the palatal lesion also it's called kissing lesion sometimes this kind of lesion also notice in the patients the denture wearer so this is a uh, atrophic type of candidiasis mild to moderate to burning sensation will be there oral hygiene is needed and the dental uh, dent denture hygiene should be maintained and the chlorexidine mouth rinses and look for the other any systemic uh, uh, immunosuppression is there, whether diabetic or that should be the role and you can refer the patient for the medical pressure. Sometimes you need the interdisciplinary or interdepartmental uh, management is also necessary for to improve the conditions. Angular keelitis, sometimes the same candidiasis can also occur in the commissure of the mouth is called angular keelitis. It is a combined bacterial and fungal infection. It is uh, and you look for the even the anemia is one of the cause for angular keelitis and then associated with the, even the uh, HIV infection is there. Angular keelitis is very common. So you can do the thorough investigation and you should know the clinical finding and the, what is the causative factor for this condition and accordingly you have to treat this. This is case can be uh, along with the systemic treatment you have to treat local treatment by clotrimazole uh, cream. That is a common uh, antifungal agent can be used. Another type of candidiasis is called hyperplastic or this is a candidial lookup, like a very thick. Other one is easily scrapable. This is a non-scrapable, but it's not caused by any uh, tobacco usage. It is a due to the fungal invasion into the epithelium, underlying epithelium, which leads to thick white keratotic patch, which is unscrapable easily. Um, and severe burning sensation sometimes will be extended to the use of agus patient will have a severe difficulty in swallowing or dysphagia also will be there and given this kind of lesions is very common in HIV uh, infected patients. So you have to think in your mind. So coming to the my, uh, treatment, so I told you the antifungal is a treatment apart from the underlying uh, treatment underlying an analysis, you have to go for the clotrimazole cream is a very common, 1% is a candid mouth paint is available or some cases you can go for the nystatin oral suspension. Uh, 1 lakh to 5 lakhs international units can be used. Now, the recently there is a other um, antifungal drugs, ketoconazole and fluconazole, itraconazole. Along with this medical um, fraternity, you can uh, choose this uh, treatment. Sometimes I told you this is interdisciplinary uh, management of the patients. And then coming to this, next uh, you can see also come across uh, this kind of lesion in your uh, practice. Uh, suddenly, the patient will have a ulcer on the palate and a fever and uh, uh, there will be a drooling of the saliva and a gingival enlargement. This is a case you can see it is a herpetic ulcer or herpetic gingostomatitis, herpes simplex infections. It is very common in both children and young adults. It's mainly primarily caused by the HIC herpes simplex virus infection 1 and there will be a prodromal symptoms uh, like a fever, malaise and a loss of appetite body pain, all this will be there the, um, prodromally, then the patient will develop multiple small ulcers. This is not ulcer, this is a small vesicle will appear, vesicles are fluid filled uh, um, 
elevated blisters occurring on the mainly on the keratinized mucosa gingiva and the palate is a common site and also the patient will have the prodromal symptoms that is the one clue for the whether this is ulcer this ulcer is herpetic ulcer or uh, apthostomatitis this soon after the formation the vesicle will rupture and causing the uh, multiple small ulcer on the palatal side which is very painful conditions and this is also the uh, treatment it is a self limited lesion and you have they they have to give the pain symptomatic yes, symptomatic approach should be there and the benzocaine ointment can be given chlorhexidine mouth rinses and the simple uh, your uh, antipyretic drugs uh, paracetamol is uh, useful and sometimes there will be very refractory cases and also this is a secondary herpetic stomatitis called herpes labialis very common in the lip sometimes you can see in the clinic and is a cold sore or fever blister and a treatment should be in the palliative care very refractory cases you can go for the a cyclover cream is a 5% uh, weight by volume is available in the a severe it is a sipla company is producing you can apply over this uh, topical application for three times and definitely this solution will be healed and uh, a cyclover topical tablet is also available in severe refractory cases to 200 mg can be uh, given to this patient for five times daily for five days and valocyclovir and famcyclovir will also be tried in various uh, success rates. This is the higher, uh, other recent uh, antiviral drugs. And the other management, I told you, this is a symptomatic approach, mucopain gel or diphenhydramine hydrochloride also can be. Exigel cream is a chlorhexidine uh, mouth, uh, mouth cream. Is, uh, gel is also available as well as mouthwash is also available. It is uh, definitely to promote the healing, to prevent the secondary bacterial. It is not... Um, even though it is caused by the bacteria by a virus, it is prevent the secondary bacterial infection and uh, can also promote the good oral hygiene for these patients. Dietary counseling also should be given. And next uh, condition is called herpes zoster. This is also caused by the viral acute infectious viral disease. Very, very, very painful and also the vesicular eruption of the skin and mucous membrane and areas separate by the affected sensory nerve will be there. Inflammation of the dorsal root ganglion is a cause for this uh, reason. This, uh, this virus will be lodged on the dorsal root, uh, root ganglions. Clinical features, the herpes zoster usually is a unilateral, whereas in the herpes simplex, the entire oral mucosa will be affected and the other dermatomes will not affect. Whereas in this condition, the unilateral vesicles and an erythematous base appear on the cluster, chiefly along the course of the nerve affecting the single dermatomes. When the oral lesion occurs, it is mainly due to the second and the third division of trigeminal nerves involved. And you can see these uh, cases, you can be able to understand this and how it is. So you can see that the one side of the face, there is a small vesicular eruption and the, um, this picture you can see, uh, there is a plus, um, vesicle rupture and causing the crustacean and the dried uh, crustacean also present on the lip. And if, if you see the, look at the uh, intraorally, there's a mouth there is a ulcer abruptly you can note only one side is of the uh, tongue and the palate is affected here also very severe erosion actually it is caused by the small vesicle the vesicle will be ruptured and causing this erosion and the ulcerations and here this patient is also interdisciplinary management is needed and um, based upon the clinical presentation itself we can say it is a herpes zoster and um, because of the unilateral vesicular eruption and if it required, you can go with the cytology and you can isolate, um, um, you can show the, the Zang smear as well as um, antibody titer also can be very helpful uh, message to diagnose these conditions. Treatment, mainly the supportive care and also there will be a very painful condition you can go with that. A cycle or antiviral um, drugs, 800 here, the 800 milligram five times daily for seven days you can give. Other uh, drugs, valocyclovir and famcyclovir also can be tried with the um, success rates. So the acyclovir 800 milligram can be given for the herpes zoster. And coming to this uh, lesions, so this is also very common in our day to day practice in the uh, mucosa. Sometimes the young females or boys all come with a small elevated lesion on the uh, lip. This is the uh, condition is causing very sometimes will be large also here this case you can see very large elevated lesion depression very translucent and also this is a translucent very painless but the it gives a very um, appearance the lip is bulging like anything 
so this is the case you can say it is a mucosal it is a mainly the uh, cause is due to the obstruction of the minor salivary gland minor cerebellum or trauma where frequent uh, cheek biting or lip biting habit is also there or any trauma from the uh, canine or uh, lead incisor that also can cause the trauma to the minor, lower lip lower lip is a common site for the mucosal very translucent or sometimes the deep seated there is a bluish who will be there and is it a painless but slowly is enlarging because of the trauma and uh, after making this uh, diagnosis we have to um, aspirate and see whether there is any mucinous here i am demonstrating there is a uh, using the syringe and uh, aspirated uh, mucinous material is collected in the syringes aspiration and then you can go for the surgical excision or nowadays they can go for the laser excision also but the scalpel excision is a very simple method approach and uh, you can make and remove all the infected and traumatized minor salivary gland and a simple suture uh, because of the rich in vascularity and uh, um, easily the lesion will be healed after seventh day you can remove the suture also you can see this notice uh, uh, um, healing of this patient and then this patient is a follow up and the lip biting should be stopped for this patient should be counseled because of why it is happened and all this should be explained to this patient and parents also and uh, apart from this so sometimes the patient also will uh, come you can notice some of the changes in the buccal mucosa uh, this is but these are the uh, not a any pathological condition it's a normal variant sometimes you can notice some bluish translucent appearance on the buccal mucosa either side it's very common in the smokers it is a leukedema leukedema because of the translucent appearance this is a normal variant of the mucosa it doesn't need for any treatment and uh, another uh, picture you can see the white line at the uh, level of occlusal print is there. Um, this is caused by the occlusal trauma, uh, linea alba bacalis. And next is the, the next one is the uh, lingual varicose. It is very common in tortuous course of the lingual vein. It, is, it should not be mistaken as a pathology. It is a, one of the normal changes occurs in the elderly or geriatric patients. Very common in the um, base of the, the basement of the floor of the mouth as well as the ventral surface of the tongue can notice this this is a uh, lingual varicosities and the frenal tag is also sometimes a very rare uh, malformation or developmental malformation you can notice that is no need for any treatment unless it is interfering with your normal functioning of the oral cavities so you should also thorough knowledge of the normal variant as well as pathology and finally so as a because in this lecture i didn't touch any tobacco related lesion like leukoplakia and oral submucous fibrosis this this is entirely the mucosal lesions arising from the autoimmune origin otherwise our immunity then the infectious conditions like virus and fungal infections and allergic reactions i have discussed and next part of the lectures we will cover the other tobacco related lesion also in conclusion the uh, clinician should have a thorough knowledge about the lesion how it is with uh, what pathology it is an infectious condition or allergic condition you should not give the antibiotic for all these patients so you should know a proper approach to the patient thorough history is also very important and make a correct diagnosis some cases you can go for the biopsy also mucosal biopsy and make a make sure that is a lesion is there um, no um, dysplastic changes or malignancies are present and then some patients you have to refer to the specialist or you can take help from the medical medical professions and combinedly you have to treat the patients and uh, this is the uh, my take home message and uh, Thank you very much for your patient listening and you should have a good high and take the diagnose the lesions. Thank you very much for the, uh, this thing. Thank you very much, sir. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Jaychandran. Thank you for yes, the wonderful lecture. You covered the entire spectrum of lesions and you did justice to almost every category. Of course, you said you did not touch some, but whatever you touched, it was amazing. Well in depth yes. and covered the entire you know, comprehensive approach to all these legions. Yeah, and thank uh, you for the uh, opportunity to interact with you and uh, and our uh, people are practitioners. Thank you. OK, so Any now questions? what we'll do is we'll take up some of the questions sent by our registered delegates. OK, sir. Uh, of course, you said you are not uh, you are not touched uh, tobacco chewers. But the first question is that only 
how much uh, punch biopsy is relevant in regular tobacco chewers or in yeah, yeah, punch biopsy okay. some regular uh, can i answer sir yeah please please punch biopsy is a different dimension so now the disposable punch biopsy is available it is a different uh, diameter 0. 0.2 0. 0.3 0. 0.4 0.5 depends upon the size of the tissue you need you can choose the punch and uh, this is a only proliferative lesion on the buccal mucosa or erosive lesion on the only the component of the soft tissue uh, it will be very useful under the local anesthesia you have to uh, um, take the punch biopsy and it will give the precise depth and the precise tissue if you're going for the your conventional biopsy there is a crushing of the tissue is possible whereas if you use the punch biopsy you will get the adequate uh, size and the without uh, crushing of the tissue so it will provide the good histological histopathological uh, features so hence the punch biopsy some cases it will very good only the proliferative lesion on the buccal mucosa confined only the soft tissue or the tongue it is very very useful uh, method of taking the tissues from the lesion sir okay great how to treat recalcitrant cases of oral lichen planus yeah yeah recalcitrant i i showed four four, four cases of uh, lichen planus i told you that is a recalcitrant means it's not refractory treatment it is not responding to the routine uh, uh, steroid therapy so re re uh, recalcitrant you can go for the other uh, treatment modality like uh, azathioprine can be used even the cyclosporine cream is also available nowadays that is very useful treatment for the uh, non responsive to steroid and other uh, treatment and other, other uh, treatment modalities like photodynamic therapies and even the photo biomodulation therapy low intensity laser therapy is also can be tried this kind of uh, uh, refractory or recalcitrant uh, lichen planus Okay, great. Is that clear, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. What has been your experience in treating geographic tongue? Geographic tongue. Geographic tongue. Geographic tongue. Mostly, it is a asymptomatic lesion, sir. It may be the developmental origin, or if it is in the elderly patients, come with uh, geographic tongue. They will have mild to moderate severe burning sensation. It is associated with the superadder fungal infection because of poor oral hygiene. that can be treated by using the nutritional counseling as well as for the chlorhexidine gluconate mouth rinses can be given and severe burning sensation is a fungal um, etiology is also one of the uh, suspicious factor so anti fungal therapy can also be given uh, sometimes the patient also should be underlying systemic uh, diseases like diabetes mellitus or you, 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 it could be the hiv infection other uh, immunosuppressive condition also should be assessed so if it is a symptomatic you can go for the topical uh, anesthetic paste or chlorhexidine gluconate mouth rinse nutritional counseling uh, and then the followed by the antifungal therapy sir okay great thank you there are two three questions all of them yeah. uh, are asking how to differentiate abscess ulcer from non healing ulcer and uh, oral sub uh, squamous cell carcinoma which mimics oral ulcers okay so after ulcer and uh, so in the after ulcer is a multiple recurrent ulcer it is a self limiting it is confined only on the uh, some mobile mucosa like labial mucosa buccal mucosa soft palate and it is have a round shape and there will be a, uh, in the periphery you can find the erythematous hollow will be there mild to moderate pain will be there whereas in the uh, after herpetic ulcer it is usually Uh, caused by the herpes simplex infection virus, and this is another one is a you know, abscess tumor. It is a autoimmune origin. Is immunological other precipitating factor is also there, of course. And then these ulcers, the hepatic ulcer, will have a usually the uh, ulcer is preceded with a small vesicle formation will be there, and prodromal symptoms like fever, malaise, and um, appetite loss of loss of appetite. These are the precipitating factor. Then followed by this ulcer will develop, and these ulcers mainly confined on the a uh, hot palate and the keratinized mucosa gingiva this is a common site is commonly seen in the younger patient it is a primary gingivostomatitis in the elderly patients it is a secondary herpetic gingivostomatitis or it is a cold sore other uh, ulcer can can be so it is a preceded by vesicle formation another one is a uh, another one is a um, autoimmune origin so the treatment is also differ and the clinical um, you can see the clinical finding you can make the uh, easily you can differentiate this lesion sir and gingiva is a common site of affected in herpetic ulcer whereas in the abscess tumors won't affect the gingiva okay hello my audible sir 
Yeah, yeah, very well, very well. Yes, sir. Thank you. How do you explain and convince patients with precancerous lesions for treatment? Many patients yeah. don't understand the importance of treatment at early stages. In your experience, yeah. please do suggest some practical tips. Yeah. So this is a very important uh, um, professional role because the patient uh, they come for some of the dental treatment. He may be a chronic smoker or a chronic uh, tobacco chewer or other deleterious effect will be there. So these patients after examination, there is any erosion or white patch or red patch. You can suspect this this lesion definitely the turning into malignancies. So after the completing your dental treatment procedure, you have to explain to the patient whether it is a mainly the cost with the tobacco because as a professional role is a ethics, you have to explain the why a lesion is occurred, even though it is not a asymptomatic, the painless. So you have to explain that um, because it's mainly caused by the tobacco and you can ask the patient to uh, go for the biopsy or other further treatment. And this is a pro professional main role and you can explain with the later on if the lesion can, you should not um, uh, thread the patient also. You have to explain to the uh, nature of the disease, how does it is uh, turning into the malignancy, why it is caused and then the, what is the role of tobacco in this case and the patient slowly they have to withdraw or cessation of the habit is also should be um, uh, insisted for this patient, sir. Okay. Can implant placement or implant surfaces hmm. cause lichenoid lesions, lichenoid reactions? Yeah, yeah. Because I told you some of the patient, even I have seen in my practice also, the different metallic, different implant materials, they have used it. So the dissimilar metallic galvanic action is also one of the cause for the lichenoid reactions. And the, suppose uh, even some patient, they remove the um, implant and then they go for the uh, other, the same kind of material, sir. So even the dissimilar metallic definitely it causes the lichenoid reaction, including the amalgam and other metallic restoration, even chrome cobalt or even uh, some of the orthodontic appliances also cause for the lichenoid reactions. So these kind of lesions definitely need the removal of this cause first. So any obvious causes there, that should be removed. Okay. It may have cause, you yeah. seen any cases? Have you seen any cases of herpes simplex virus infection affecting mm -hmm. nasopalatine nerve, showing mucosal lesion crossing the midline of hard palate? No, sir. Usually, it, it, it don't cross the midline. Um, even I have shown two or three pictures, two cases of um, ulceration in the palate. It would definitely it won't cross. I have this zoster only to cross the, um, uh, cross the midline. Don't okay. cross, sir. Thank okay. you. I had seen in my practice a case of yeah. oral lichen planus. After medication, mm -hmm. it got corrected, but again, it reappeared after one, two years, and it keeps reappearing after one to two years how to manage such recurrent yeah. cases recurrent cases the um, characteristic feature of lichen planus uh, recurrent uh, relapses there sir you have to explain to the patient nature of the disease and then the after treatment completely in the um, symptom um, free period they should come and uh, they should periodically follow and the, the level of stress is uh, one of the factor suddenly the lesion can flare up so they need uh, the long-term follow-up sometimes the um, uh, one year after two years also the can, lesion can relapse. So they need, uh, during that period, again, they need to take the medication or whatever medication they take in the previous uh, treatment. They, they have to follow, sir. But you have to explain to the patient, this not permanently cannot be cured, but you have to oh, take the medication whenever the lesion is relapsed. So there is a possibility, sir, relapse and recurrence. Okay. There is one doctor who has sent a detailed case history. I'll just try to read it. A 17 years old male patient with no history of bad habits like smoking or smokeless tobacco complained of irritation and burning sensation mm. and a problem in eating, especially spicy mm. foods Okay. on both sides of cheek region. On examination, okay. there was redness in both backside of cheek regions. Also, some white elevated dot like structures in that region. He's a tobacco That's user, no? tobacco user. No history Hello? of no no history of smoking or smokeless tobacco. Okay, okay. So it as could be a uh, yeah, yeah. As per my knowledge, provisional I I provisionally diagnosed it as a malnutrition or vitamin deficiency and treated, but there was temporary relief, but it reoccurred. 
my question is how can i diagnose this lesion and how can i differentiate it from a pre malignant lesion yeah so this is a non tobacco user is a lesion is present on the bilaterally erosive lesion so probably it could be a erosive type of lichen planus lichen planus you have to thoroughly see that any white size is present even other mucosa should be examined thoroughly um, thoroughly have to examine and the patient should also be checked for in the diabetes or hypertension is there whether he is taking any medication so that could be the cause for the erosion even another finding if it is uh, patient is a diabetic you have to think for the uh, atrophic type of candidiasis also should be uh, think and first uh, they need to go for the thorough systematic evaluation with underlying uh, factors and other systemic conditions should be evaluated and then you can go for the exfoliative cytology sir in the erosive region you can take the um, exfoliation of the tissues and you can send for any dysplastic ch changes present or it is even you can try to demonstrate the fungal mycelium whether it is a candidiasis um some cases you can go for the after this we can go for the tolidin blue dye also then this is one of the simple chair side investigation can go and the dye is uptaken by this lesion you can think it is a dysplastic or some cancerous condition then followed by uh, if the dye is retention is there then you can go for the small incisional biopsy in the look for any uh, malignancies present or with a well differentiated or moderately or poorly differentiated Uh, squamous cell carcinoma so this is this should be the our approach and uh, look for the, any lymph node enlargement is also present in this patient uh, this is this is the approach for this uh, patient sir great so Thank coming you. to the last question of uh, this evening uh, what should be our approach to treat the recurrent ulcers on lining mucosa in kids yeah the same thing the um, it could be a um, recurrent aptostomatitis kids means uh, below 12 years so it could be a recurrent aptostomatitis or it may be malnutrition induced uh, recurrent aptostomatitis so they need uh, now the steroid is not indicated for this kind of patients improve the oral hygiene should be oral hygiene should be maintained and also they can go for the if it is severe uh, pain burning sensation given the benzeramine hydrochloride mouth rinse is very useful um instead of using the chlorex in benzeram hydrochloride and this is uh, now the your uh, company is also making the cool vora it is very uh, fantastic uh, medication for uh, treating this uh, um, is analgesic anti inflammatory kind of mouth rinses and uh, and also you can go for amloxanox cream is there amloxanox is a analgesic anti inflammatory cream so lexanox preparations available that can be topically applied and a nutritional status and you should be improved in this it's a definitely the lesion could uh, respond to your treatment okay Hello. so th with this question we completed all the questions thank yeah. you dr jayachandra it was a very exhaustively covered session you touched thank upon you, all the topics and uh, there was so much of clinical evidence to it and uh, good that you actually told the prescription the way people should prescribe and the way they should monitor the lesion after the prescription how to do the follow up etc and i'm yeah. so i'm so happy that we invited you and you covered the topic you wanted to cover yes. and uh, on the behalf of uh, icp health products limited i thank you and uh, to all the viewers we thank you for joining in and making this uh, uh, event successful okay. and soon we'll be announcing our next episode the 25th episode of uh, icp clinical series each episode one clinical challenge with that we end the show thank you dr jayachandra once again good night thank you very much sir for the opportunity thank you most awesome. okay